very glad that you clicked on this video today to join me, Olivia, in bringing you some amazing bookish content. As you can see by today's title, we are going to be filming my, or I am going to be filming my bookshelf organization. I'm going to do it in a little bit of like a montage for you guys, and then I'll talk to you about it when I'm done. It is not organized yet, but like all the books are kind of jumbled around. I have all the genres mixed up. I have middle grade with YA with adult. It's just not a thing. So to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eyes and at least to let me know where everything is, I'm going to organize it and I'm going to show you guys that while I do it, as well as I want to talk about these two books. So if you haven't seen the video that I uploaded on Sunday, you will see that I read a decent amount of books in January and I have a few books that I want to read in February, as well as these are two books that I did read in February. I completely finished this book, Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Maas, and I DNF'd this book by Tracy Dion, Legendborn. And I wanna to talk to you about why I DNF'd this one and what I really loved about this one. That's kind of going to be the video. I wanna organize my bookshelf and talk to you about how I did it and what I find to be the easiest for me at least. And then I wanna to talk to you guys about these books. So without further ado, let's jump straight into today's video. So I guess to start, we'll talk about the books and then we'll organize the bookshelf. First, I wanna go into Legendborn. This is a book I completely DNF'd. I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't like, but I'm not surprised. Um, going into this book, I picked it up because the girl on the cover is obviously she's African American, the cat, the author's African American and I am, and I have not read any books, if I'm not mistaken, or just not a significant amount of books written by African, African American authors, as well as with main characters that are black. It's like, I kind of want to like dive into that a little bit. Not that I want to like pick and choose books based on like what I buy, but just like I've noticed that I like haven't read any. I don't think there's a reason, but like I just thought, why not? So I picked up this book because I saw everyone ranting and raving about it on BookTube as well as just like Instagram posts and whatnot. And then Bloodmark just recently came out book number two. But the thing for me is, if you watched my last video, you'll probably already <laughs> know all of this, but I was raised, I don't wanna say, I guess you could say sheltered. Things in the news, things that had to do with race or injustices, discrimination, things like that, unless I was at school sitting in a history class, those are things I didn't encounter. I went to all white schools. I wasn't in, I didn't go to schools that were predominantly black. I didn't have any black friends besides like my cousins and my family members. That's just how the coin kind of flipped for me. Um, so I never really experienced as a kid or even really as an adult, those experiences besides like sitting in history class and learning about different things or hearing people talk about it here and there. So growing up now as being an adult, I'm almost 27, it's like I still don't experience those things and then I also don't engage in topics and conversation and debates about those things. Um, so in terms of like Black Lives Matter and just different things like that, those aren't conversations I have. Those aren't conversations that I get involved in. Those aren't things I talk about. It's like things that don't keep my peace. I am really working on not involving myself in that. So like politics, a lot of things I just don't engage in unless I have to. So for me with reading, I find that it's an escape for me. I like to pick up books because I want to dive into someone else's world, someone else's, someone's head, just like an author's ideas and just experience it, imagine just all of these different things and kind of escape the real world or just to read for fun. For example, like one of my favorite shows for a while was Law and Order Respect to Victims Unit. Love it, great way to escape, absolutely love all the characters. But when the pandemic hit, then the new season came out with everyone wearing masks, all of like different like protests and different thing were in and movements were happening within the movie that like portrayed what was happening in real life. And for me, that was really off putting. So I couldn't finish the, I couldn't continue watching my favorite series. So for me, it's like, I don't enjoy reading books that <clears throat> touch on these type of concepts. I don't know. It's for me because like I read the measure by Nikki Ehrlich. I have that review video up like, I don't know, like a few weeks ago now. And with that, although it seems so nonfiction, and it followed the idea of the pandemic, something about it was just engaging for me. So maybe it could just be certain books and certain topics. But for me, that's why I DNF'd it. That was one of the reasons is that I am just not a fan of reading books that are about race. It's not something I enjoy. It's not something I like talking about. It's not something that I like, just I just don't. So that was one of the reasons I DNF'd it as well as it was way too wordy. I'm only 89. 84 pages in and I literally felt like I was reading for forever. Like I couldn't get it 
it seemed like it was so much information kind of being dumped on you at once like all these different like characters and things are happening and you're like I don't even know who the main character is what is her backstory her mother why what is happening and it's just she's thrown in and you're thrown into the mix of all of this content and then it's like that's it like it's no nothing is gradual like you're not getting explained it's like you're just as much as it seems like the character is getting thrown in the mix and doesn't know what's going on you are as a reader and for me i really don't like that i want to understand that's why i really love like with assassin's blade i'm gonna talk about next this is the prequel to the throne of glass series i feel like though i probably didn't need to read it first i really do like it and i love novellas i love it because it kind of gives you a background to explain things without throwing you into a book kind of how I felt this one is so it being extremely wordy was something that I didn't like it took way too long for me to kind of kind of get a gist of what it's about and I still don't feel like I have it yet and then I just don't like the topic of race for example one of the moments that like was really off-putting to me um and it was like I don't even know it was on page 30 I was almost like I don't even think I can continue to read it after that which I guess there may be an opportunity in the future where I read a book that is um, written by an African-American author. And there's a lot about race in it and I might like it. So it could just be the writing specifically of Tracy Dion that I just don't enjoy. So I can't necessarily say that I won't like it at all. But yeah, it could very well be this. But like, for example, um, the two, the main character and her friend Alice, I believe is her name, were at a party. They just got into college or some type of like college like program. And they're at a party and it all goes wrong and the police pick up them two to take them back to campus. And she's Asian, if I'm not mistaken. And the police officer goes on to ask, you know, like, so how did you guys land this sweet opportunity to go to this university? Like, how did it work out for you? You know what I mean? It's a book smart scholarships, whatever. And so he's asking, um, how do y'all swing it? That's what the police officer says. Alice answers first and she says scholarship. So her Asian friend says scholarship. So then the police officer then proceeds to say, how about you girlfriend? And I'm guessing need based. And so it's like, he then automatically uh, believes that the African-American character only got into the, the college because of need based help. And I think it's just so like, I think obviously racist and discriminatory and just like prejudices, I hate them. I hate them. They're ignorant. I think the people who have stereotypes are ignorant. And I think it's such, it's something that's like, I don't want to say cringing, but it like triggers. It's, I hate it. I hate it. Although I wasn't someone who was raised to like, who was like involved in it or experienced it, but just like the whole idea of it, I think that's why I don't partake in debates or conversations or read things about it. I think that's why I don't like it because it's so pathetic and dumb. In my opinion, I think it's ignorance and people who aren't intelligent stoop that low and say stuff that is that doesn't make sense. And so to read into the book, it's so annoying and it's so stupid that I feel like people can stoop that low and be that disgusting that when it's in a book it just may, I don't enjoy it like I just don't enjoy it and that was like so I kept on going like I can do 50 more pages and then it was this wordy um and then it's just disrespectful you're calling her girlfriend first of all it's like what is that supposed to mean and then it's like no she and then she kind of explains that she also has gotten a scholarship and then he's just like sure kind of like like he doesn't believe it and it's just annoying to think like I don't know. I think I just don't enjoy it. I don't like it. I don't, I don't appreciate it. And I think every one of those who are African American like me or just any American who has common sense is just going to be like, or any person who has common sense, it's like, it's stupid. Being racist, being discriminatory, being prejudiced, being, being just terrible to people because of the color of their skin, their race, their ethnicity, their culture, you're dumb. And so, although the author, maybe it's a great book, it is so annoying and maybe the rest of the book doesn't even have that in it. That is so off-putting to me. And then also not only that, it's that it's wordy and wordiness is really hard. It's very well possible though, like a couple months I wanna pick it back up, but I can say that is like my reasoning um, and my opinion. So if you don't have the same opinion to me, that's totally okay. But like, I just don't like books that talk about race. I don't like books that talk about certain things that I don't want to talk about, that I don't want to put in my head, things that just get on my nerves. And I feel like that's one of the things that gets on my nerves because it's ignorance. I do think the author portrayed it in a way that's like, obviously that would happen in real life. You know what I mean? Kind of like that. So I pride her on that. Um, I bet the book is really great. So in time, I'll pick it up. But as of now, I DNF'd it because I really don't like books that contain stuff about race. And I really don't like wordy books. And I don't know. Just let me know down below if you liked it, if you were able to get past that, if you were totally fine. Maybe you are. Maybe I'm just 
reading too much into it. I really just need to dive deeper into the book. So let me know down below. But those are my general thoughts. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> um, and then the second book I want to talk to you guys about is Assassin's Blade by Sergey Moss. You guys, I love this book. I mean, I tabbed it quite a bit. Um, there's not a really a specific point in here. I guess you could say the end of the book, like the last little chunk of the book, literally, I think the last like couple of lines. Um, but yeah, I love this book because of the character development. Um, oh yeah, there we go. This is the part I want to talk to you guys about. But yeah, I loved it because of the character development. I feel like with some books, you see character development in the terms of like the character starting out like really insecure and not knowing what to do and they're feeling some type of way and they're like, oh no, you know, how can I, how am I going to be able to accomplish this? How am I going to be able to do this thing? You know, because I'm... I'm not good enough. You know, they start out really low or they're young or they have to like come of age and all of these things. And then they get to the point of like the last book in the series or the last chapter. And they're like this tough, really cool person who can handle everything, who's grown so much, who's developed so much. But with this book, it's backwards. The character had so much development and learned a lot and experienced a lot and went through a lot. But she started off extremely confident, extremely tough, extremely powerful, extremely sure of herself. And then as the book progressed, you got to watch her go into the point of like, she second guessed herself. It's like, and then at the rest of the book, you like, you saw the character go through things. It's like, she saw how naive she was. She saw how she was, she wasn't as smart as she thought. She isn't as tough as she thought. She isn't as brave as she thought, but she's still gaining and growing and developing as a character. And so that's really what I love about it. And I can definitely say like with the last, um, the on page 428 right before like the after portion of this book Arobin who is supposed to be like her um the guy who's in charge of the assassins guild like him who's like the king of the assassins I think that's what they call him I can't remember honestly um yeah the master her master that's like teaching her and training her and whatever and she's like one of the best assassins there are and throughout the book which I'm going to try my best to not give you spoilers. Like, I really want to try. I know I said in my last video that I really want to talk about in depth, but I think I want people to be able to read this and love it because I've never experienced character development the way this kind of brought it out. But in the beginning of the book, you find out she's like the best assassin she is. And this is following like several different quests she kind of has to go on to and jobs and missions and whatnot like that. But in the beginning of the book, you really love Arabin because it's like he takes care of her. He treats her very nicely. You know what I mean? Like he protects her and everything. She has all these things. And then she's in connection with Sam, another assassin who's like really good too, but is not considered like the prodigy the best. And she's working with him and doing things with him and going on these quests with him. And eventually like a romance forms. Like he's always loved her. So you get to experience that in the book. And it's just like amazing. And... She goes through things. Well, in one of the missions, she chooses to defy the rules and make her own path. And it causes a lot of destruction, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering and sorrow. And Arabin eventually lashes out and just treats her like dirt. And she gets sent away on a mission by herself and is separated from Sam. She has no clue what's happened to him. He has no clue what happened to her. So that's kind of where she's at at this point. And she's like going through these quests on her own and eventually she gets back. And when she gets back, she begins to realize how conniving, how sneaky, how how evil Erwin actually is and what he actually thinks about her. And so for all this time, you're thinking that she's just this great thing in his eyes. He values her and he cares about her. But at the end of it all, you find out that he's a possessive narcissist and Although she almost figured it out at the end of the book, she still doesn't know. I'm just going to put it like that. If I can say anything, the end of the book is like she develops the idea or she gets the understanding that her master is a terrible person and doesn't actually care about her the way she does. But yet it almost like gets clouded by other things that start happening towards the end of the book. And then, but as the reader, you get to see that if only she could have just, like, opened her eyes and saw, like, she would have known, like, her, her troubles are because of him. And I think that is the word of saying, it's like, she was almost there to, like, fully realize it. And then for whatever reason, at the end of the book, it's like, she got distracted, it was too much going on, and she was like, no, he's maybe not as bad as he is. And she was almost, like, trying to, like, like cower back underneath him and then but as a reader you're like no he still hates you he's terrible don't trust him but it's like 
I don't know. It's like almost like an, like she's attached. You know what I mean? And so I don't know if this is making any type of sense, but what I can say with the end of the book is like, you read, you're reading this about this character who is a grace assassin and she's tough. She's going through so many things and the person who's supposed to protect her and be there for her, who she was looking up to and who thought cared about her is actually the person who's trying to tear her down. And then she has Sam, this person she falls in love with. And like, it was just tragic in that term of how that ended up playing out. And then it's like, she gets blindsided again and believes that her master still cares about her and is going to help her out and be there for her. When in reality, he's the one who wants to destroy everything about her. And so that just really sucked. And to, just to give you this little bit here, um, which without giving too much in the way of spoilers away, just to let you know the mindset of this character, um, because I don't like sharing my belongings. I'm just going to leave it at that because I feel like it's going to give just way too much away. But like, to be somebody who your job is to protect someone and they trust you for you to actually do everything you possibly can to bring them down to nothing just so that they have to keep crawling back to you oh my god it's so terrible like and i just i loved it though i'm gonna be reading um book number one which is here the throne of glass just, I want to know if in this book she's going to be able to, like, understand is what my thought is. Like, is she going to be able to understand? Like, is she going to realize is reality going to hit her? It's just, like, really sad to watch her, like, kind of silly, like, crawling back and crawling back and crawling back. And I want to know, like, what she's going to do when she actually figures out who is behind all of her, like, destruction, who was causing it. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, I don't know. It was amazing. I can't recommend enough. Hopefully that wasn't too much in the way of spoilers. I still recommend it. Obviously, I don't think you have to read this in order to read this. You probably could do them all then to get to this. But like, yeah, I've never read a book where the character is so intense and so big and is literally brought to nothing, but is still developing versus how you see them being nothing to then grow to become something. So I really like that. Um, this was heartbreaking. This was intense. This was thrilling. It made you happy. It made you angry. You felt so many emotions and I cannot recommend it enough. And I cannot wait to um, pick this up and read it this month. But yeah, that's going to kind of conclude these two books. Um, not that this was technically like a review. It kind of was. But like, it's just my, like, my thoughts on the book. I hope that you guys were able to understand my rambling and my feelings on these. Um, let me know down below what you thought. Um, and yeah, I guess we can kind of jump into organizing our bookshelf or our bookshelf my bookshelf I can jump into organizing my bookshelf um and we can kind of see what we're gonna do with it because I just have a lot of stuff you know I have a lot of random books everywhere and I kind of just want to get them all where the genres are the same um middle grade is with middle grade fantasy is with um, um y is with ya so on and so forth so i'm gonna do a little montage and let you guys see my bookshelf <laughs> I don't know if it looks it's a little blurry pull you guys up I don't know if it looks really any way um, I don't know if it looks different there we go good view oh yeah there we go camera woman over here but yeah I don't know if it looks any different to you guys but it is so basically in this shelf over here which I'm gonna try to move the tripod as I'm doing this because I don't feel like doing a lot of like cut editing and whatnot. But over here I have all my like historical fiction book about books. So basically these are all the ones, either either about like a like about librarians, libraries, bookshops, um, books about books, as just everything that has to do with books, basically, it's on the shelf. And then I decided to showcase my Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies book. It's a nice hardcover. It's super pretty. So I decided to do that. Then down below on this shelf here, we have all my psychological thriller, mystery, 
um, type books in here. And then I decided to showcase The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw just because I feel like psychological thriller. This one is, if I'm not mistaken, so much like the Salem Witch Trials. I believe that's kind of what this is based off like witches and whatnot. I thought that kind of worked for that specific cubby. Then in this cubby right over here, we're going to have our YA fantasy novels as well as some mythology type novel things. But I put them here and these are the novels that are YA that I have that are like with the most well-known authors like we have Sarah J Moss in here we have Scarlett St. Clair we have like most of those like well-known author that are YA fantasy kind of in this then up here we have more YA fantasy or just like YA sci-fi um type kind of hodgepodge books so these are like sci-fis fairy tale retellings um let me move it up yeah, like sci-fi fairy tale retellings like og fantasies um yeah just kind of that kind of just a hodgepodge pretty much more of like dark fantasies in here that are like romancy kind of just a random hodgepodge shelf i really didn't know where to put these books i do need more shelving but that's what i thought of so far then if we scooch on over here, we have this shelf down here. I decided to showcase this cute little candle that I got from Meyer. It's a holly berry. Very ironic. <laughs> candle smells super good. But in this, it's my, these are some of my uh, middle grade. So I have this series, the um, Wildwood Imperium series or the Wildwood series. I have that in here. I have Aragon. I have some like books from when I was really little, like Little Princess Heidi. So a lot of the books that give me like, even though Aragon doesn't, but like most of these books in here kind of give me like woodsy kind of vibes, like Narnia, a lot of it's based in the woods and whatnot. So that's basically what that's near. And then I stuck the Tale of Despero in here because I thought it would work really well to be near like Little Princess and Heidi since they're a little bit of like classics. Then above it in this shelf, I have my cute Harry Potter mug that's just for decoration because it's like not something I want to drink out of. And these are also some middle grades. So I have books about books that are like these right here. So this is the Anna James Pages and Co series. We have Story Thieves and Book Scavenger. These are all books about books. And then we have like The Forgotten Five, 13 Witches, Danger and Mayhem. We have Wilder Lore. We have Amari and we have Eva Evergreen. So these up here are just kind of like just some really adventure type book number one. Um middle grade series up here. Sorry about the lighting, but like, that's all we got. <laughs> then over here, I have more middle grade books, but these ones are a little bit more like, I wouldn't say not spooky, but like deeper plot. So like they're kind of on the verge of like, they could be YA, but they could also be middle grade. So that's why I have them kind of stacked here. And then on the very last cubby, but my big plant is in the way. We move it on the very last little shelf down here at the bottom we just have our um romances and a lot of like my colleen hoover and then like pete Emily henry and stuff like that like most of my romances i've already read so they're kind of in that um, other cubby drawer over there that i have but i just have those down here for now i don't know necessarily what else i put in this shelf possibly some other books in time but like that's kind of where i have my romances it's not really a huge genre i prefer books that have romance in them versus a whole book being romance but yeah, those are down there. And then right here, I have some of my like classics. I guess you could say like I have the great illustrated classics, Around the World Lady Days, Treasure Island, Oliver Twist, Little Women, Wizard of Oz, and Black Beauty. And then I have Alice in Wonderland, Do the Wicked Glass, The Wild, White Fang, um, Secret Life of Bees, Listening for Lions, True North, Christmas Carol, All My Biblio Mysteries, and then I have Pride and Prejudice and Another Little Women. So I thought those would be nice there because they're kind of classics. They're older books, you know. I just saw that they would kind of work in that little section. And then, yeah, so on, let me turn you back around so you can see me. Yeah, that's kind of how I have decorated and organized my bookshelf. I'm super sorry about the lighting, but like, I have some lighting back there, but like in my actual living room, I don't have like a large lamp, which I probably should invest in. But yeah, that's going to kind of conclude today's video. So we talked about legendborn we talked about assassin's blade i gave you my opinions and kind of like my review or my thoughts on the book so let me know down below what you think if i should pick up legendborn and just give it an opportunity if you really liked assassin blade if you want to read it if you're planning on it if you finish the whole series just let me know and then yeah we did a little montage on me organizing my bookshelf and she's kind of showing you my thoughts so we have a middle grade 
we have YA, we have psychological thriller, we have history book about books and historical fiction, we have classics, and we have romances. And that's kind of how I've done it. So now I have easy access to like, I want middle grade, these two cubbies. I want fantasy, this cubby. I want, you know what I mean? So it makes it really nice. Um, but yeah, that is going to conclude today's video. I really, really, really hope that you guys enjoyed. Do not forget to give it a thumbs up and hit your notification bell so you can notify it every single time I post a video. And subscribe to my YouTube channel and join the Bookish fam because we're so nice and we have so much fun together. And yeah, I'm so glad that you guys are here. We're almost at 600 subscribers. I think last time I checked, we were at 571. So that's super awesome. Let's see if we can get to 600. And yeah, just stay tuned for more videos coming out next week. That, But yeah, without further ado, I will catch you in my very next video. Bye, friends.